The next speaker will be Brenda Ramokopelo. Brenda is a futurist with an ethical reference, keynote speakers, and award winning risk and governance professional with years' experience in the financial sector. She is the CEO of the Transdisciplinary Agora for Future Discussion, Taft, a global thing and do thanks commit to building the gateway into an art of Africa and facilitating young futurists. Thank you very much, Brenda. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers of this conference uh, for the invite. I know that we've been talking a lot about longevity in the US, in Europe. I think um, it's about time we spoke a little bit about Africa because I think a lot of people might not know what's happening in longevity in Africa, and at the same time, there's a lot of work that's been done by scientists and academics, uh, but from what we've seen, there's not a lot of incorporation of um, data from Africa, or there's not a lot of research that's been done for people in Africa, or people of um, African de de descent that are affected or affected by the environment, lifestyle, and all that is in Africa. So I want to speak about um, the state of health in Africa. I want to speak about uh, the health policy in Africa because um, we really believe, oh, OK. I need to know how to use this first. How do I? Am I going? Okay. Left for oh, maybe you okay. I'm going. I'm going forward. Sorry about that. Sorry. Oh, there you go. So I'm going to speak about the health policies because that's one of the things that might be affecting, you know, how Africa starts to collaborate with the world as far as longevity is concerned. And where are the impediments? Uh, where are the opportunities? Because we truly believe that there's a lot of opportunity that sits in Africa that might be overlooked. And you know, it might be something that might be useful, especially for um, the longevity community. So I'm going to talk about the how do we integrate traditional innovation in healthcare. I'm going to talk about what it is currently and what is it that can be done going forward. Um, once I know how to use this, oh, okay. Hey, so what is Afro longevity? So Afro Longevity is a project or a movement that we've started and it was specifically to look at the life expectancy in Africa. As most of you might know, our life expectancy in Africa is quite low. Um, I think it, it might be the lowest in the world. But then again, Africa is just one, not one country. It is 55 different countries. And depending on where you are, it might be high or it might be very, very low. And the reason for that is because of different factors. Because there's um, different genetics that make up, you know, whatever African uh, genes are. There's different lifestyles, there's different cultures. And I think the biggest thing of all is the fact that Africa, in most countries, has been hit by a lot of uh, infectious diseases. And that has caused that um, our life expectancy to be very low. So the whole aim of Afro-Longevity is to start to look at what are the interventions that are needed in Africa that can help us to increase the life expectancy. And what is it that we can learn from that to be able to benefit the world? Because we think there might be something in Africa, considering the fact that it has the biggest pool of genetics, um, and there's a lot of undiscovered territories in Africa. What is it that we can learn from that that we can um, um, contribute to the world? Um, just maybe before I move on, um, so. Didier, I don't know if it's Didier or the previous uh, uh, presenters, they spoke about the decline in life expectancy over the past five years. We have seen an increase in the life expectancy. 
uh, in the past five years in Africa. We have seen how resilient Africa was in, in, in the terms of COVID. So, so those are some of the things that we are looking at and saying, maybe there's something here that we are missing. We know for a fact that infectious disease, diseases were one of the main factors that affected the life expectancy. And with the improvement in biotechnology, with the introduction of more medicine, with education and all of that, that increase, um, we have seen that increase. Now, what is the state right now in Africa? As far as uh, policy is concerned, there's issues regarding infrastructure. The quality of healthcare in Africa, in many countries, is not as good as we would like to be. That, of course, will affect how healthy we stay and the type of health interventions that we get. And therefore, you know, you find people getting sick and dying. The different diseases that I spoke about earlier on, they are affecting a lot of uh, African countries. Uh, the health policy is such that it's not looking at preventative uh, measures, but more looking at sick care. And I think that is the problem that we have across the world. It's not unique to Africa, but specifically in Africa, because of the issues that we've had with infectious diseases, you find that the focus is more on let's make sure that you feel better today. So you just put in plaster on top of the wood. You are not looking at the causes of the diseases, but you are looking only at the effects of the diseases, which is something that we really, really need to start looking at if we are to have positive development in that particular sector. Now, um, we've got a whole lot of factors that are affecting that and that are leading us to be in the state that we are. First of all is education. There's not enough education about um, things like longevity, things like transhumanism, things like advances in science and technology in Africa. For example, if I speak about uh, longevity as an educational program, there's no one university in Africa that has got that. Uh, I was li listening to Natasha talking about what's happening with Singularity University, what's happening in Silicon Valley. Um, most of the people that are educated and are scientists or are knowledgeable about this, these are people that have left Africa to go and work outside. And because of the poor infrastructure that we have, you find that there's brain drain as well. You've got a lot of Africans they are very educated. They are working in most of these global labs that, it, that are being spoken of. But they stay there because the opportunities are there. You don't have them coming back to develop and coming back to deploy all of that in the, in the continent. So the, the, the environment as well, um, you know, it doesn't it cater or provide opportunities for Africans to be able to develop. So those are the type of things that are affecting this and the things that we need to change to ensure that we can also uh, level the play field and start to sit at these tables that have got opportunities to make things better and speak the same language as everybody else. So um, that is why we're saying that it's really, really important for us to have a collaboration between academic institution in terms of understand what education needs to be in this institution, what awareness needs to be created. Because for us, it's not only about the scientists and the technocrats and um, the doctors that are practicing. It's also about our communities. Um, as you know, Africa is mostly rural. But those are the people that are going to consume. It is 1.6 billion people that are sitting in that continent. It's a lot of people. The median age of those people is 90, the youngest population in the world. These are people that are innovative, creative, interested in making this change. But they do not have the education or they do not understand some of these concepts. So education becomes a very, very important thing. Creating awareness in the language that they understand. Yes, this language as in I speak Afrikaans, the other one speaks English and Sesuana. In South Africa alone, we've got 12 official languages. This is over and above all other languages that we have. Take Nigeria, has got more than 200. 
So the language itself becomes a barrier. But it's not only that, is I might be speaking in English and my mother might understand English, but the way she understands what longevity is or what transhumanism is, is totally different to me and is totally different to my 10 year old. So we need to be able to explain these things in the way that these people understand it, but also taking into consideration the ethical values, the moral values, the cultural background, because that is very important in Africa. I cannot just come and say, you go into, we're going to extend your lifespan. The first question is, are you playing God? Depending on who you're talking to. You need to be able to explain what healthy life extension means in the language that I get it. So um, if you think about 55 country, 1.6 billion, um, uh, a lot of cultural backgrounds, is a lot of work to be done, is the work that afro um is, is doing and intends to do. Now there's another element when we're talking about culture and the diversity and the difference, is the role of traditional healthcare practices. As you know, in most of the rural areas, there's a practice of those traditional uh, medicine, and it is often viewed as uh, not good enough, it doesn't work. Um, but if you look at the type of medicines and how the lifestyles of those people is, is that some of these medicines do work for them but they have not gone through the scientific test for efficacy and all of that. So how do we incorporate this? How do we ensure that we, may, we, we learn something from what they've been practicing without the science, without um, the, 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 the education? And uh, we look at what they eat, their practices as well. How do we incorporate that into what's already being done? Because we might be able to learn something from that. There might be, most of this medicine, they are plant-based. The fact that it has not gone through a scientific process doesn't mean it doesn't work because the lived experiences that we've seen work. But not all of it work. Some of it might be dangerous and we need to take that out. So we need to ensure that even when we're speaking to these people, even when we are appealing or lobbying to these people, because most of our work is around advocacy, is do it in such a way that they feel like they are included. We pick their foresight. We don't assume this is what their issue is. We don't assume this is my, what might work for them. We need to make them part of the process. We need to ensure that they are involved in part of this because that will make it easier for them. So that is something that uh, we are looking at as a form of longevity. And we've got a lot of representatives across some of the African countries where we want one. Because if I stay in South Africa, I cannot uh, um, think that I know what's happening in Ghana or what's happening in Cameroon. I need to be able to go there, understand, speak to a person who understand the culture and how they're doing things to be able to do. And I'm saying this here, and it is very important because this is what has happened in the past, where you have, for example, vaccines that are they, they have come from outside, they have been tested outside, it doesn't take, care, take into consideration the impact that it will have for a person living in Africa who's never been to Europe, the genetic makeup is different, and then it is just passed on. Um, it has detrimental effects. So longevity, we see it as a human, um, or, or the impact of longevity is a human problem. It is not um, for a certain type of person or a certain group of people. It is something that is affecting all of us. And therefore, whatever solutions that we need to find, it has to be solutions that would benefit all of us. And how do we do that? Through collaboration. Not everyone has got the answers. I've spoken to a lot of longevists that have been working on this for over 20 years. And to date, you know, there's not one solution that we can say, this is going to solve longevity. But we have not included everybody. So 
our ask is that we've got a lot of ground or a lot of resources that are untapped maybe we can provide some of the answers that are needed but there's a lot of work that needs to be done around research there's a lot of um, collaborative efforts that can really benefit the longevity movement we would like to be part of this we are doing it on our own and i think we'll get far but i think that if we work together we can get even further um, despite the different challenges that we've got um, so um, we spoke about uh, what has happened in longevity and what has not happened. We think some of these solutions might benefit us in Africa. We think there might be solutions that can come to Af from Africa that can benefit the world. So collaboration becomes very important. Ongoing research and projects in Africa. There's a lot of research that's being done in Africa, but it doesn't see the day of light. Part of the project that we do is we are making sure that we encourage and promote research around Africa, about Africa, and also ensuring that it becomes part of the research that's available, the data that is shared um, uh, for scientific research as well. Our policies, because of the young economies that we have in Africa, lucky for us, they are in such a way that um, they are still looking for innovative ideas. They, they can still be changed. They are not set in stone. We have young economies, therefore innovation is something that they get excited about. So where you have issues with GDPR, and I have in South Africa what I call the Protection of Personal Information Act, it might be at least much more flexible in terms of sharing data and what type of data you share. So it's something that you know we need to start thinking about from a scientific point of view, from an academic point of view as well. These young people that are in Africa, like I said, innovative, um, you know, are thirsty to learn. And more than anything, I mean, we talk about longevity being beneficial for people that are still young because it takes a lifestyle, it takes um, a lot of work. If you do it too late, you might not benefit from it. These are the people that can really be um, the change that we need to see uh, around the, um, longevity. So, um, we, we, I spoke about combining the traditional strategy, and here, please don't get me wrong, I'm not only talking about traditional medicine, I'm talking traditional way of life, the cultures, the background, the same way that you would do it in Europe, the same way that you would do it in the US, what we are saying is that we need to take that into consideration and not just um, uh, cast it aside. So there's um, those, those strategies that I spoke about. So one of the key things that we are currently doing is to advocate for longevity. We are collab collaborating with a lot of uh, global partners. Uh, Humanity Plus is one of those. People like David Wood are there as on the advisory board. DDI is one of those people that are there as well. We're working with foundations like Science Foundation to try and promote uh, research and education in South Africa. Uh, uh, longevity uh, Escape Velocity Foundation as well has been a great partner of us and we have different organizations and uh, different events that take place in Africa on an annual basis to promote longevity in Africa and we would like to see more of you attending our events we would like to come more to your events but more than anything we would like to get collaboration between yourselves and us and maybe from what you've been doing for the past 20 30 years there's something to be learned and something that we can we can uh, i'm just gonna run through this and something that we can use uh, in Africa to avoid some of the pitfalls that you guys have seen over the past 20 or 30 years. And also, uh, we can be able to have ideas or get uh, some ideas of how to do it quicker or do it smarter. So um, next year we've got oh, 2024. So this year, the 9th and the 10th of October, We've got a longevity conference in Lagos, Nigeria. This will be the third edition of the longevity conference in Africa. And all of you are invited to come. You can go to our website, it's tabs.org or Afro Longevity, 
and then we will have all the details about what we do in Africa and also about the conference. Thank you so much.